Whether you're just starting out in Raft, the final chapter for the very first time, or you're a seasoned veteran of the game, managing your hunger level is extremely important to your survival and longevity. If you haven't planned ahead of time to stay well fed, you may find yourself in a situation that becomes increasingly difficult to get out of. It's for that reason that we've created this beginner food guide for new players that are just finding their way to Raft in 2023, but also as a refresher to those who may have played this amazing indie game in the past. In this guide, we'll show you how to collect different food sources in the early game by looting, farming, exploring, and fishing. Then, we'll take it one step further by discussing the benefits of taking those few extra minutes to cook all of the food that you're about to consume. We'll wrap up this guide with a few tips as you begin your transition into higher grade materials and overall better quality equipment so that you can confidently continue your raft playthrough feeling like one boss chef. As you start your fresh world, you are very likely going to encounter beets and or potatoes as the very first means to fulfill your hungry belly. Now depending on the difficulty that you've chosen for your playthrough, you are going to need to address your hunger, it's just is it sooner or later. In any regard, raw potatoes and beets will give you a small boost to filling your empty stomach and can easily be collected while looting floating barrels and crates with your simple plastic hook, but also with your hands. After collecting these items, you'll essentially have three options. The first, you can eat these vegetables raw to immediately mitigate some of your hunger. Two. You can place them in a small crop plot to farm for a greater yield, or the third option, you can cook them using a simple grill. Now eating raw vegetables is a good option when you're in a pinch during the early game, especially if you've prioritized crafting other objects or you just simply haven't had enough material collected to be able to build either a small crop plot or a simple grill. But this is definitely not sustainable for the long term. This is really because you're going to have to have collected a lot of them to fill you up since they really don't provide much nutrition on their own. Farming the vegetables to collect more of them is a really fun mechanic, but there are a few things to be aware of. The small crop plots will need to be crafted and although they aren't particularly expensive, they will take up a sizable portion of what's right now your limited raft space in the early game. You'll also be required to water them after planting with fresh water, so this is going to mean that you need to have crafted a simple purifier. This means you're going to take up additional tiles on your raft, and you also need to craft a plastic cup. This helps convert the salt water to something drinkable. With that said though, really, a simple purifier and plastic cup are two things that you're really going to want to have in early game anyways, so it's not necessarily a huge deterrent to farming. However, you may be lucky enough to have it rain while you're farming. This means that you're not going to need to water the initial crops as the water is going to seep in from the sky into the soil and really jumpstart the growth stage. One of the major annoyances of farming in the early game for us was trying to allow these vegetables time to grow and constantly defending them from seagull attacks. The seagull attacks are really easy enough to shoo away, but it does require a ton of attention and really does also limit the amount of time that you're able to spend off raft should you wash up onto an island because you aren't able to attend your plants at the same time. You can though learn a scarecrow recipe at the research table to assist with guarding your plot, but we didn't really seem to have too much success with it and didn't really feel that the reward was much worth the effort in the early game. To get the most out of your vegetables as a beginner in the early game, we would highly recommend crafting a simple grill as soon as you have the resources available to do so. Now this is similar to crafting the water purifier in that it will take resources up front, as well as a continuous flow of planks to stay operational. It's also going to take up some room on your raft as well, but the benefits of cooking your vegetables definitely outweigh continuing to eat them raw. It should also be noted though that the effects aren't as immediate because you do need to allow the vegetables time to cook on the grill, but the nutrition is about two to three times higher than eating a raw potato or beef. Another added benefit here is that the creatures aren't trying to steal your meal when it's on a grill, so in a sense it's almost like you're cultivating and consuming two to three potatoes with far less time and attention. 
Now that we've covered the very basics of filling your hunger bar, let's take a look at the second best option in Raft's early game, collecting fruit while exploring islands. Eating fruit like coconuts and mangoes from fallen trees, or watermelon and pineapples plucked from the bountiful bushes scattered across small and large islands can be really great options to keep you fed while exploring or back home on your raft. Each of these fruits will mitigate a fairly similar degree of hunger, but with the added benefit of boosting your thirst bar as well. This is particularly useful in the early game while encountering a large island, as there's usually a lot to explore. It's easy to get lost on these, or to leave your raft without having additional food or water resources, so the fruit that you're able to find will serve you well and help you continue your quest without needing to venture back to your raft and reset. Similar to farming vegetables, these fruits can also be grown, but instead of putting the fruit directly into the plot, you're going to require their seeds and these can sometimes be found while picking fruit from the trees or the bushes. Now the main difference between farming fruits and vegetables, aside from needing the seeds, is really that at a minimum you're going to need a medium crop plot to place these seeds, and this is going to ultimately require much more crafting material and space on your raft. You're still going to need to water the crop and wait out the growth stage while fending off some hungry seagulls before you're able to reap the rewards of harvesting these plants. Because of this, farming fruit is still something that we really didn't begin doing until we were a little further into the game. This all brings us to our preferred method of surviving and staving off hunger in Raph's early game especially as beginners because this really is relatively simple and straightforward and also appears to give the largest food bonuses. Now fishing is unlike the previous two methods of collecting food sources in that the fish take a considerable amount of time to collect and you'll also need to have the materials to create a fishing rod to be able to do so. Not only that, but managing the fishing rod's durability can sometimes be a minor hindrance but we promise the good outweighs the bad. A basic fishing rod is relatively inexpensive to craft, so we would recommend that you create it as soon as you can after crafting your grill. So obviously you can't eat raw fish. I mean, I guess you can, but without it making you more hungry anyways. Because of this, you're likely better off to have the grill created in case you need to eat before you begin fishing, and this way, once you do actually start catching a few things, you can cook the fish as soon as you begin to catch them. There are many benefits to fishing, primarily the fact that you don't need bait in order to cast or catch the main edible fish in the game. There are a variety of fish that you'll be able to catch right away, however only four different kinds of fish that you can catch will actually be able to fit on your starting simple grill. Now these fish include mackerel, tilapia, palm fret, and herring. The two larger types of fish that are available to catch kind of right away would be salmon and catfish, and these are going to require the next highest grade grill, so we'd recommend building a simple storage container to hold them until you've unlocked the new grill. These truly are amazing sources of food, so it makes sense to kind of stack them as you can. On top of fish, you're also able to loot boost the shark for four shark meat each time you kill them, which again, this provides a substantial boost to your hunger after cooking and consuming the meat. Of everything that you're able to cook on the simple grill, the cooked shark meat will definitely give you the largest boost towards your hunger, with mackerel giving the best boost for all catchable fish. Another clear benefit of fishing is that you're able to fish while on the raft or on an island, and you can move around and collect materials without your line snapping, so this helps you perform a limited number of actions while continuing to multitask and gain a little bit of efficiency with your time. Since we've outlined our preferred method for sustaining hunger levels in the early game with basic equipment, we'll preface this next section by saying that as you begin to collect cooking pot and juicer recipes, farming definitely does become more important and may even take precedence over fishing and cooking on the grill, as completing some of these recipes often expands your hunger or thirst bars past their maximum limit. Now this is going to obviously help you stay fuller for longer, and this is really essential for navigating larger islands, especially when you begin questing. However, all that to say that both the simple and advanced grills are likely still the most straightforward ways of quickly getting your hunger vitals up. Once you've progressed enough to have created and researched dry bricks, 
you will be able to craft the smelter. This, alongside the research table, are arguably the two main drivers of early game progression and they allow you to craft higher grade materials and learn more efficient recipes. Once you're able to craft and place the advanced grill, you'll notice its operation is essentially the same as the simple grill, although it is a bit more expensive to craft and a little bit more taxing on your raft space. But the coolest thing about it is that you're able to cook upwards of three fish or other food items at a time, depending on their size. And then obviously too, you're going to be able to grill the larger salmon and catfish that we had mentioned earlier. These end up being basically four pieces of high grade meat with each cook. Now it does take quite a bit of time though to be able to make the machinery like the advanced grill, cooking pot, and juicer, and ultimately it expands past the reach of this early game beginner guide. So be sure to subscribe to Friendly Frenzy Games for a raft advanced cooking tips guide in the very near future.